Whether you favor the longsword, the crossbow, or the dagger, your weapon and your ability to wield it effectively can mean the difference between life and death when adventuring. On today's D&D Academy, we're covering every adventurer's favorite tool of the trade, weapon. Welcome back to D&D Academy. My name is Paul, and I'm the Dungeon Master here at House of Crit. Weapons in D&D come in a few classifications and have a variety of features. Every weapon is classified as either a melee or ranged weapon. A melee weapon is used to attack a target within five feet of you, whereas a ranged weapon is used to attack a target at a distance. Weapons are also separated into simple and martial weapons. Most people can use simple weapons with proficiency. These weapons include clubs, maces, and other weapons often found in the hands of commoners. Martial weapons, however, include swords, axes, and pole arms, and require more specialized training to use effectively. Most warriors use martial weapons because these weapons put their fighting style and training to best use. Before we get into it, let's review attacking with a weapon. When you make an attack roll with a weapon, you add one of two possible ability modifiers depending on the type of weapon. When you attack with a melee weapon, you add your strength modifier to the attack roll. Or, if you are using a ranged weapon, you add your dexterity modifier instead. Proficiency with a weapon allows you to add your proficiency bonus to the attack roll as well for any attack you make with that weapon. If you make an attack roll using a weapon with which you lack proficiency, you do not add your proficiency bonus to the attack roll. Unlike armor, there is no penalty for using a weapon that you are not proficient with. Now let's get into the weapons found in the game by taking a look at the weapons table found on page 149 of the player's handbook. Starting from top to bottom, the table is first divided into simple and martial weapons, and then further divided into simple melee weapons and simple ranged weapons, as well as martial melee weapons and martial ranged weapons. The columns of the table are divided into name, cost, damage, weight, and properties. Most of this is pretty self-explanatory, but let's first look at damage. When making a successful attack roll against a target, this is the die or dice rolled when you successfully hit when using the listed weapon. You also add the same ability modifier used in the attack roll to this damage roll. For example, when using a battle axe to deal damage, you roll 1d8 and add your strength modifier. Nearly every weapon in the game has properties listed which either define the specifics of their use or provide additional options. There are 11 properties that weapons can have, so let's go ahead and detail them first. The first few properties are pretty simple. If the weapon has the finesse property, when you make an attack with a finesse weapon, you can choose to use your strength or dexterity modifier for the attack and damage rolls. You must use the same modifier for both rolls. Some very large weapons have the heavy property, which means that small creatures have disadvantage on attack rolls with heavy weapons. A heavy weapon's size and bulk make it too large for a small creature to use effectively. Conversely, some weapons have the light property. A light weapon is small and easy to handle, making it ideal for use when fighting with two weapons. When you take the attack action and attack with a light melee weapon that you're holding in one hand, you can use a bonus action to attack with a different light melee weapon that you're holding in the other hand. Some weapons are useful at keeping out of harm's way and have the reach property. Weapons with this property add five feet to your reach when you attack with it. This property also determines your reach for opportunity attacks with a reach weapon. The two-handed property means the weapon requires two hands to use. However, this property is only relevant when you attack with the weapon, not when you simply hold it. The versatile property means this weapon can be used with one or two hands. A damage value in parentheses appears with this property, 
which is the damage when the weapon is used with two hands to make a melee attack. For example, a longsword deals 1d8 damage when you use it one-handed, and 1d10 damage when wielded with both hands. Moving on to the properties found on ranged weapons, let's now cover range. A weapon that can be used to make a ranged attack has a range shown in parentheses after either the ammunition or thrown property. The range lists two numbers. The first is the weapon's normal range in feet, and the second indicates the weapon's maximum range. When attacking a target beyond the normal range, you have disadvantage on the attack roll. You cannot attack a target beyond the weapon's maximum range. Most ranged weapons also use the ammunition property. You can use a weapon that has the ammunition property to make a ranged attack only if you have ammunition to fire from the weapon. Each time you attack with the weapon, you expend one piece of ammunition. Drawing the ammunition from a quiver, case, or other container is part of the attack. However, loading a one-handed weapon does require a free hand. At the end of the battle, you can recover half your expended ammunition by taking a minute to search the battlefield. If you have a weapon that has the ammunition property to make a melee attack, you treat the weapon as an improvised weapon. We'll cover improvised weapons later in this video. Some ranged weapons also have the loading property. Because of the time required to load this weapon, you can fire only one piece of ammunition when you use an action, bonus action, or reaction to fire it, regardless of the number of attacks you can normally make. Some weapons also have the thrown property. If a weapon has the thrown property, you can throw the weapon to make a ranged attack. If the weapon is a melee weapon, you use the same ability modifier for that attack roll and damage roll that you would use for a melee attack with the weapon. For example, if you throw a hand axe, you use strength, but if you throw a dagger, you could use either your strength or your dexterity since the dagger also has the finesse property. The last property is the special property, which is found on the lance and the net. So let's cover that real quick. Starting with the lance, you have disadvantage when you use a lance to attack a target within five feet of you. Also, a lance requires two hands to wield when you are not mounted. Moving on to the net, a large or smaller creature hit by a net is restrained until freed. A net has no effect on creatures that are formless like oozes or creatures that are huge or larger. A creature can use its action to make a DC 10 strength check, freeing itself or another creature within its reach on a success. Dealing five slashing damage to a net, which has an AC of 10, also frees the creature without harming it, ending the effect and destroying the net. When you use an action, bonus action, or reaction to attack with a net, you can only make one attack, regardless of the number of attacks you can normally make. Before we wrap up for today, let's go over improvised weapons. Sometimes characters don't have their weapons, and they have to attack with whatever's close at hand. An improvised weapon includes any object you can wield in one or two hands, such as a broken glass, a table leg, a frying pan, or a wagon wheel, or even a dead goblin. In many cases, an improvised weapon is similar to an actual weapon and can be treated as such. For example, a table leg is akin to a club. At the DM's option, a character proficient with a weapon can use a similar object as if it were that weapon and use their proficiency bonus. An object that bears no resemblance to a weapon deals 1d4 damage. If a character uses a ranged weapon to make a melee attack, or throws a melee weapon that does not have the thrown property, it also deals 1d4 damage. An improvised thrown weapon has a normal range of 20 feet and a maximum range of 60 feet. And that covers all the basic rules regarding weapons and their properties in D&D. Thank you for joining me today down in the dungeon. And if you've been enjoying this series, consider hitting the like and subscribe buttons down below and possibly dropping a comment on what topics you'd like for us to cover next. In our next video, we'll be continuing our series on items and equipment with tools in Dungeons & Dragons. So I'll see you all soon.